And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a couple of quick, easy, hot sandwiches that you can make any night of the week for dinner, or you could make them, you know, for a quick lunch. They make great leftovers for your lunch the next day. So let's get started. For our side dish, we're going to make this simple. This is just a bag of frozen tater tots. I chose tater tots because I love them for one thing, but you could use any cut of the frozen french fries that you want to do. You could do the same thing with sweet potato fries or you know, traditional fries, whatever you like. But I've got one bag here on a lined sheet. I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees. I'm just gonna take a little bit. I'm just using canola oil. You could use vegetable oil or olive oil, whatever you wanted. I want to get these coated very thinly with a little bit of oil. I know it looks like a lot, but it's really not because I'm using the squeezy tube. That's probably a tablespoon altogether. And then I'm just going to take some seasoning salt and pretty liberally go over these. And then take my hands and kind of coat them in that. Whoops, get back in there. and then spread them out to one layer, just like that, and then put them in your oven, and they take about 25 minutes or so to bake. So I would start these first because your sandwiches are gonna cook a lot quicker than these. So just pop them in an oven for 25 minutes, that's all, and then get started on whichever sandwich that you're choosing to make. Today we're gonna make an Italian sloppy joe and a Cajun cheesesteak. So you could take your pick. In this pot, I have just some very, very lean ground round that I'm browning up. That's all that's in here is just the beef. You could use ground turkey if you wanted to. I've made it with both. It's delicious either way. Or you could do half and half. It's, it's up to you. You could even use ground pork if you wanted to. That would be a little rich. I would probably mix a little bit of the ground beef if you did want to do some pork in there, kind of a meatloaf mix sort of grind. Just want to get the pink off of that. Let that go for just a minute. We're going to add some vegetables. I'm adding a green pepper. You could use a red pepper if you wanted. You could use a poblano, you could use whatever kind of pepper that you want. It's traditional in a cheesesteak. And you want to dice it up fairly fine, because remember, this is going to be a sandwich. I don't know that I'm going to need this whole pepper. This one was pretty big. But if you have any left over, just um, freeze it or save it for another day. If you're making another recipe that you want to add this to. You could even saute the leftover pepper if you wanted and put it on a cheesesteak. We're not going to put it in our cheesesteak today, but you could because cheesesteaks sometimes do have peppers and onions on them. The one we're doing today does not, though. This is just a sloppy joe, which I find most children like. So this is one of those things you could, you know, even a picky eater would eat this and if they don't want to see the vegetables I might would put them in a food processor and chop them up even finer and then they don't even know they're in there but they're getting the nutrients from it that's a sneaky way to get some vegetables into your little picky eaters and I know this because I had two picky eaters when they were little they're not as much anymore but they were when they were small and you find all kinds of creative ways to get that vegetable in there where they don't even know it. Just chop them up in a food processor to where they're undetectable. 
and they almost melt into the food and then they won't see them. Good little sneaky trick. So I've got one bell pepper here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. I like a lot of vegetables in mine. I love vegetables. I'm not a vegetarian, but I could be because I really, really do like a lot of vegetables. A lot of evenings, I just have veggies for dinner. Did last night, as a matter of fact. My kids had salmon and I had veggies. Mike had veggies. So there's our pepper, let's see. Now, I'm using extremely lean ground beef, so I don't have a lot of fat in mine. If you're using a fattier cut, then you would want to drain any excess fat, but I really don't have very much in there, so I, I'm not gonna drain any. What little bit is in there will help to saute these peppers. So we'll get that in there. Then we're gonna add some onion. I've got one medium yellow onion that doesn't want to cut, there we go. Um, you could use green onions if you wanted. You could use a red onion, a white onion. Any kind of onion will work. Just peel it, I cut mine in half, and then take that outer layer off, because sometimes that can be just, even the white part, if you're not careful, it can be tough. And you wanna do the same thing, you wanna chop them fairly fine. Again, with the picky eater scenario, if you don't want them to see the onion, you need the flavor of the onion, put it in a food processor. Chop it up really fine, they'll never know it's there. But you'll get that flavor. Because you do need the flavor of the onion in your sloppy joes. I love them, I love sloppy joes. I love the traditional sloppy joe. I love turkey sloppy joes. I just love them. I'm gonna stir that in. We'll cut this other half of the onion and then we're gonna add some garlic. I love these things. They're so easy to make, so quick to make. So even on your busiest work day, you could have your dinner on the table in 30 minutes. You really can. And it's, it's even easier if you prep ahead. A lot of times when school's in session especially, I will do my prep, because I menu plan for the week. And if I can, I'll go ahead and do my prep of chopping and all of that and get sort of a meal kit kind of thing together. So I would have the onions and the pepper and the garlic all chopped together and put in a Ziploc bag to where all you gotta do when you get home from work or school or whatever you're doing is just put it in there with the beef. It saves time. Prepping ahead is really key at oftentimes to getting a meal on the table. And then a couple of cloves of garlic. I love garlic, very, very healthy. If you'll smash it with your knife, this one has a little bit of green. Always cut the green out of your garlic, find that's a little bitter, and then just chop it. Or you can use the pre-chopped, I do that sometimes too. Just put it on your board. And chop it up. and add it to your meat mixture. I'm just gonna let these vegetables saute. I'm gonna take a quick break and when I come back, we'll add the rest of the ingredients on this and we'll talk a little bit about a Cajun cheesesteak. I'll be back in just a minute. Now all I've done is just let that garlic and pepper and onion saute for just a minute. I'm gonna turn my heat down. I had it on like medium high. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning mix that you just, the blend that you buy in the grocery stores. Some salt and some pepper. 
Remember my rule, add the herbs or spices before you add the liquids. The oils that are naturally occurring in here will cause those flavors to bloom and really does make a big difference in the final product. Okay, just for a minute or so. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of Worcestershire sauce, one can of tomato sauce. Let me get the spoon and get the rest of that out of there. Don't wanna waste it. Just tomato sauce, whatever brand you like. Not crushed tomatoes, but tomato sauce. And then some ketchup. Now traditional uh, Sloppy Joe's will have brown sugar in it. This does not. Remember, we're doing the Italian version of a Sloppy Joe. You don't want it to be too saucy, but you want it to be saucy enough. Turn it down to low. Stir it all together. Mmm, smells so good. I saw a, um, a kitchen towel the other day that I started to get for myself. I thought, that would be me. It says, a messy cook is a happy cook. And I thought, I need that. I really am. I am a messy cook. But that's okay. The final product tastes good. So we just want to let that simmer. So put a lid on it. That needs to simmer for all 15 minutes or so. Not very long. And now we will get started on our... Uh, Cajun cheesesteak. One of my favorite sandwiches is a Philly cheesesteak. All four of us, my, my husband and my two boys both, Austin and Aaron and Mike, we love Philly cheesesteaks. And I mean, they really are very, very good. But I, I like to mix it up sometimes. And a Philly cheesesteak, if, if you don't know, is normally ribeye sliced thin with a provolone cheese or cheese whiz even with and it's sauteed up till it's good and brown then they add like peppers and onions sauteed together and put all that together on a hoagie bun with cheese absolutely delicious today we're going to make a cajun version of a cheesesteak sandwich now this if you're not familiar with this particular cut of steak and that's why i wanted you to see it this is a skirt steak traditionally a skirt steak is used for fajitas or something like that. It's absolutely delicious. It's a very, very beefy flavor. You could use flank steak if you wanted. They're, you know, either one would work here. They're less expensive than the ribeye and they cook really, really quickly. I do wanna just cut off any of these little pockets of fat. I'm gonna go ahead and get my skillet preheating. I have a pretty large skillet here and I'm gonna put it over like medium high heat because we're actually gonna saute this. Um, we're gonna slice it really thin and then we're gonna saute it. Any of the big fat pockets, you wanna trim those off. There's naturally occurring fat marbleizing in the interior and you wanna leave that. Let's go ahead and cut that off. If you have any little silver skin, can you see right here? That is called silver skin. You need to trim that off. Take a little paring knife, just slip it under there and it'll come right off. That will not tenderize, it will not dissolve. And you can tell the difference. Let's see, let me find a little packet of fat for you. Okay, here we go. You see how this is chunkier and, and just, you know, it, it's, it's chunkier, for lack of a better term. This is flat. And against the, the meat, the silver skin, you need to trim that off of any kind of beef or pork. I've never seen it on chicken, but it is on beef and pork. You need to trim that off. It's not any big deal to trim it, but it really does make a difference. You won't be able to chew that up. It really has to come off. There's not gonna be a lot. Sometimes there may not be any. Here's a little pocket of fat I wanna trim. And then we're gonna talk about how to cut this particular cut of meat. This is one long muscle. When you buy it, it will be folded over on itself. Trim that off. 
okay? It will be kind of folded in like this, and you'll see it, I've cut this in half, but you'll see it folded over like that. And if you will notice, the grains of the beef run this way. It's extremely visible, okay? You see how the lines, the grains in the steak are running this way? You want to cut perpendicular to that. If you don't, it will be so chewy that you will not be able to chew it. But if you cut it against the grain, it is so tender and so good. Now see how I'm just trimming this off? It, it almost just peels off. Just take a knife under there. You want to get rid of all of this. Not the meat, but just that little thin membrane, if you will. It's very important to trim that off. This one actually has more on it than I've ever seen on one. Normally they're, they're a little more trimmed than this, but this particular one seems to have it on there, but it's not a problem to trim it off. Comes right off. Any big fat pockets that you see, you wanna get those off of there. Just trim it up, and that's good. Now, this is one long muscle just like this. I cut it in half, okay, to make it a little easier. Now, I'm gonna cut with the grain, I'm gonna cut it in half again, again, to make it easier. And then I'm gonna turn it, <clears throat> and I'm gonna use a knife, and I'm gonna go against those fibers, <clears throat> very thin. If you wanna put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes, sometimes that will help to slice it, and as I slice, I'm just going to put my slices in a bowl. Sharp knife, very important here. You want to get these as thin as you can, because it just makes it easier. Now, to illustrate the point, you see how those are long fibers? Essentially what you're doing is cutting them into short, manageable pieces, and it makes it much easier to chew. I'm just going to continue cutting all of this up, take a quick break. When I come back, we're going to season this up, we're going to get it in the skillet, check on our potatoes, and then we're going to eat. I'll be back in just a minute. All I did was cut the rest of that skirt steak and put it in this bowl. I'm going to use just Creole seasoning. Any brand will do. Um, you want to liberally coat this. This has spices and herbs, salt, pepper. Let's just read the ingredients on this particular brand. Salt, red pepper, black pepper, chili powder, garlic, all kinds of great things in there. Onion powder, any brand of Creole seasoning coat that. You want it coated. This is the only seasoning that's going on this. So you want to make sure. You could do this ahead if you want <coughs> that red pepper. If you wanted and let it get, you know, good and marinated in that. You could even do it the night before if you wanted that <coughs> red pepper in there made me choke. I've got a large skillet here that I've preheated. I'm using nonstick. You don't want to add all of this at once. I'm just going to put half, because if you add it all, it's going to steam, and you don't want that. You want it to get that good golden crispy brown on there. So add about half. Take some tongs, kind of spread it out into one layer. Leave it alone and let it get brown. Now, while that's browning up, it just takes a couple of minutes because we cut that very, very thin. Doesn't take it long to cook. For the cheese steak, you want to use a 
um, a subtype roll. This particular one is a Philly steak bread. You could, I mean, you could use any kind of roll you wanted. Traditionally, this is what's used. We're just going to warm these. It's just a, just a submarine type thing. For the Italian sloppy joes, you could use a regular hamburger bun if you wanted to. I like the crostini buns that you can buy in the grocery store. It's just an Italian bread. Got a little bit of semolina on the top. It's delicious. I'm just going to warm these up. We're going to check our steak here. And everybody's got that red pepper in there strong. Even the camera people are coughing. But it's so good. You see how quickly that's cooking? Turn them over. The reason you want to leave them alone at first is you want that browning. And if you continually fiddle with it, it's not going to brown. You've got to leave it alone and let it do its thing. There's a technical term for that called the Maillard reaction. And you want to let that caramelization happen because that tastes phenomenal and adds another depth of flavor to the Philly cheesesteak. Now I'm just gonna let this brown. Let that go for a few more minutes. Turn it over maybe one more time. Let's check our Italian Sloppy Joe's. That's done. And oh, that smells so, so, so good. That's good to go. I'm gonna take a quick break, just let this keep simmering. And when I come back, we'll check on the potatoes and we'll wrap this up in the best part. I'll show you how to finish it and we will eat. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now, our potatoes are done. I just ate one, they're really good. All I did was take a couple of the buns, drizzle them with a little bit of oil, put them in there with the potatoes for just about five minutes or so, just to kind of toast them up. You don't have to do that if you don't want. I browned that steak, took it out, put it in a bowl, and then put the other half in and browned it up. Then I added the steak back in because we're gonna finalize this with just a tablespoon of pepper, I mean pepper, butter, just to kind of make a little bit of a moist sauce, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. While that's melting and doing its thing, mmm, it smells so good. We will serve this up. Here is our Italian, let's put this up here, our Italian sloppy joe with the toasted bun. You just want to take some of this, place it on your bun, and then add a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese on top. The heat from that meat will melt that and there you go, a wonderful, easy to cook Italian sloppy joe. If you have any left over, this freezes beautifully. And then all you gotta do is thaw it and heat it up and you've got dinner done for another day. That's a great way to, you know, stretch this into two or three meals if you, you know, if you want to. Now, let's get our wonderful steak. Now you could, in a separate pan if you wanted to saute some peppers and onions. By all means, you could. You could saute some hot peppers, whatever you wanted. Ooh, that piece looks so good. You wanna take your steak, pile it on there. Mmm, yum. Yum, yum, yum. And then add some you could use pepper jack, you could use Colby jack, you could use cheddar, you could use whatever you want. I'm using Colby jack because the Cajun seasoning, the Creole seasoning is spicy. Not, not horribly bad, but it has a little spice. So 
I think pepper jack cheese might be a little much for most people, but if you like spicy, because pepper jack can have a little kick to it, by all means, add some pepper jack. Again, the heat from the beef will melt that cheese. If you wanted to put it under a broiler for a second, you could. But there are a couple of easy, quick meals that are delicious. They're homemade. You know what's in it. I really, really think it's important to cook at home because you're controlling the ingredients. You know what's in there. And it's, this was, you could do this. If you weren't filming a TV show, you could do this start to finish in 30 minutes. Guaranteed. Get that oven preheated, get the potatoes in first, and then choose one. Do the Italian sloppy joe or the Creole Cajun cheesesteak, and there you go. A quick and easy meal for your family or just you or you and your spouse or whoever. Great idea, is, and I do this when school's in season. I will purposely plan meals because, again, I am a meal planner. I have to. And then I will purposely set aside enough for lunch the next day. And I go ahead and pack it in the little containers. And I'm going to do a show on that, on how to do that kind of thing. And put it in the re refrigerator. And there I, my boys have lunch for school the next day. It's hot. It's homemade. It's healthy. All they got to do is microwave it at school. And they've got their lunch ready to go. But we've got dinner in under 30 minutes. Try these recipes. You could use any kind of potato. I just chose tater tots. But you could use sweet potato, frozen sweet potato fries, or just regular crinkles, or they make the spiral cut, they make waffle fries. There's so many different varieties of frozen potatoes in the freezer department of your grocery store. I use them all the time because it's quick and it's easy. We just seasoned them up with some seasoning salt, baked them in the oven. I hope you enjoy this, and I will see you next time on Everyday Mama. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.